everyone. Um, I'm going to share with you the work that we did uh, about uh, a year ago on um, these two emerging standards called legal.ml and legal.uml. And it's a basically uh, initial work. Uh, we're setting some criteria to test whether these standards um, are going to be suitable to represent uh, information, normative information in the domain uh, in other way. And also uh, to share information across all the application. So, um, <coughs> now, uh, sort of for background, I'm going to talk about what is normative information. And we're going to define that for the, in the context of this research. And then uh, I'm going to show you uh, some standards, regional and open standards for sharing normative information. Um, and then I'll show you a list of criteria that we set up uh, to test this, uh, to test whether these standards are, are going to be suitable for us. And then we talk about legal doc ML and legal ML. What are they? And I'm going to introduce you to this. And then uh, a quick example of how to model uh, a, a, a paragraph in the regulations in these standards. And then uh, I'll finish up with uh, some, some discussions and conclusion. So what is normative information? Uh, there are three forms. We're talking about legal norms, uh, which are entities of law. So a legal norm um, is a piece of legislation or, or a paragraph in the billing code. For example, in, in the uh, clause 114 of the New Zealand Billing Code, uh, we have a, a provision that says a owner must notify the authority if they want to change the use of the building. Otherwise, they will commit an offence and there's a penalty of up to uh, $5,000. So this is a, a piece of legal norm. And uh, we're also talking about normative standards or specification. For example, ISO standards, New Zealand standards, NFPA. These are all uh, standards that are that may be normative, may be informative, but we're talking about normative standards that are called upon by the reg reg regulations or legislations. But also, we're talking about design briefs. They're not legal as such, but legal within the project contract. In the, in the context of the project. And uh, complying to those uh, is considered uh, uh, complying to a normative standards. Uh, normative information also comes uh, in various types. We're talking about facts, discrete data, and constants, such as uh, uh, a space that is used for an office uh, would be would have a occupant density of one person per 10 square meter, for example. We also have tabulated and graphical uh, lookup data. Uh, you know, given certain parameters, we uh, and certain conditions apply. We also have mathematical expressions. Some are quite explicit with um, equations. Some are implicit in the sentence in the text. We also have explicit rules. Uh, similarly, we have some explicit rules, some embedded in text. And uh, we also have the deontic operators. This is uh, specific to legal domain. Uh, we have obligation, text that uh, oblige, the give obligation that in the state, the obligation, permissions, prohibition, and uh, penalties, etc. And we have imperative statements, things that we must do. Or shelter, and then there are some definitions and commentary. These are all the types of normative information we're talking about. Now there are two standards to share normative information. Um, normative information, or, or let's say a legal document, comes uh, in the, it would have a literal content, which is the, the look and feel of the document, but also the semantic of the document, right? This meant the content, the logical content of the document. And we have standards that share the literal content, uh, with various standards that I'll show you a list of. 
and some open standard legal doc, uh, legal XML. That is that was the basis of a lot of other markup languages, markup standards. And in particular, Acoma and Tosa. There was a project by United Nations for sharing legislative and judicial information in Africa, uh, which is now being standardized as a legal .ml. So this this part is to represent the look and feel of the document, the textual content. But for the logic, logical content, the semantic of it, we have rule languages, we have uh, rule interchange format, uh, legal knowledge interchange format, semantic web rule language, uh, notation three, rule, etc. They're all capable of representing rules. And we have this rule ML that was uh, developed in 2000 that is now uh, formed the core of legal rule ML that we'll talk about later. So this is a list of standards, regional standards, and a couple of open standards for sharing uh, the textual content of legal documents, the look and feel of documents. We have a U.S. guide, a U.S. code uh, in the U.S., in NOMOS in Greece, etc. And I'd like to draw your attention to a comma and cursor shown in, in red. That is the base of legal doc ML. So this, uh, this standard sort of uh, dated back to 1992. And for the semantic, the rule, the, the logical content of uh, a document, we have uh, rule ML, which is uh, quite important in the for, for legal rule ML, and and the rest of the standards that we see here, which are mainly open standards. Now we set up a list of criteria uh, to test these two standards. We pick legal doc ML and legal rule ML. Uh, because they, they show some promise and we set up this initial criteria to see whether they are suitable as a candidate uh, as a candidate standard to represent normative information in our domain so criteria one uh, the standard must have the ability to represent normative information that is both human and machine readable and it must be able to be managed independently of the, from, of the system that's using the standard and the criteria two, uh, it must be able to represent the literal, the look and feel, and the logical content, the semantic of the document coherently. So they must support uh, what's called isomorphism, which links a rule to its text position. And uh, it must have some independent uh, offering tools for, for us to use to develop the system. And uh, it must be open standards. And Finally, must must be scalable and support any type of document. So, so this was. Oops. So, so this was just the initial uh, candidacy selection criteria. So now, legal .ml and legal rule ml they are both emerging standards, emerging open standards uh, developed by uh, OASIS, uh, Organization for the Advancement of Structured Information Systems. Uh, it's a consortium of uh, uh, people. To, to, set up, to set up standards around the world. And then it's <coughs> intended to represent any document, especially legal documents, and designed to work together coherently. And so to represent a document in its, its entirety, we have legal document to represent the look and feel, the text, the structure, and the literal content of the document. And we have uh, legal UML to represent the semantic of it. And uh, they both, uh, the most important point here is that they both work together uh, and a rule is linked to its text provision uh, by, uh, by means of association, uh, which is uh, isomorphism support. 
Now, the structure of a legal doc ML document uh, basically is very simple. It's a legal doc ML document with metadata, preface, preamble, body, conclusion, and attachment, which mimic any uh, legal document, any typical uh, legal document, with some variation. So, legal doc ML is exchanged in Open Standard XML. Uh, it's a standardization of a comma and cursor that I mentioned earlier. It was a, there was a project for United Nations in 2004. And then um, it maintains the structure and literal content of a source document. And uh, an important feature here also is that it can capture the entire life cycle of the document, all the changes of the document, uh, all the amendments that can be captured in one model. It is compatible with Metalex, which is an earlier standard uh, to present li uh, literal content of legal documents. Uh, Dutch government has uh, uh, encoded a lot of uh, regulation in Metalex, for example. And legal raw ML, we have uh, this is the structure of a, of a legal raw ML document. It has metadata, uh, context with association. Now, these associations that link a rule to its uh, text provisions, and then some statements, the different kind of statements that uh, describe a legal uh, con legal uh, context. Now, legal raw ML is also exchanged in Open Standard XML. Uh, it can it actually extends the Open Standard Rule ML that I mentioned earlier. Uh, native support for Deontic operators. It has a, a support natively for this obligation, permission, prohibition, compensation, etc. And support multiple interpretation of a legal text. So it can store in one model different interpretations. So it can be used for different level of granularity, for example. And support isomorphism, which is which link a rule to its text provision, so that any changes in the text uh, would trigger a change in the rule, such as amendments in, in, a, in a legal uh, text, which is important. Okay, so I'm going to speed up a bit. A rule in the legal rule ML uh, looks like this. It's based on rule, rule ML, and uh, with. Uh, some statement like uh, obligation in this case. Uh, so, uh, so if then you have conditions and normative effects, normative effects being uh, beyond the operators. So, and, and the linking between the rule and the text document, a uh, text provision is uh, based on association such as this. So, for example, for quick example, we have uh, evacuation um, time. This is from the Zulu building code. Evacuation time must allow occupants of a building to move to a place of safety in the event of a fire so the occupants are not exposed to any of the following. Uh, fractional effective dose of uh, carbon monoxide of 0.3 or a greater than 0.3 and, and, and the rest. So th this can be formalized as follows. Uh, tenab tenability conditions for an evacuation in this room, uh, FED CO greater than 3, and rest, and then we have evacuation time, which is the actual travel time plus various uh, pre movement or queuing time in between. And this is obviously an obligation uh, that evacuation time must be less than the time to reach tenable conditions. So we have three rules. We have one rule that uh, is a default uh, visibility in the room that is 10 meters, and rule two, we have a uh, it's an exception. If the room is less than 100 square meter, then the visibility can be 5 meters. And then the third rule, which is a bigger rule, we have uh, we, we create this, or we, we, we establish uh, the, the time, uh, the maximum time that it's allowed for evacuation. And to evaluate our selection criteria, we we found legal doc ML and legal raw ML are human and mission readable. They're based on XML standard. The standalone inf uh, normative information model can be maintained separately. Uh, they support isomorphism, so they can link a rule to its text provision. It's available, uh, the authoring tools available, uh, emerging open standards that fully support any type of normative information uh, using open standard XML. It's scalable, 
and can represent any type of document. Additional considerations. Legal DocML is a standardization of a common cursor. It's compatible with Metalex. Uh, UK uh, government is using it. US Congress also using it. Uh, and we've got a few other standards that is compatible with it. Legal RuML supports the physical logic uh, and biotic operators natively. Um, and as a conclusion, we feel that this initial criteria uh, support uh, the uh, initial uh, uh, hypothesis that these two standards are suitable for uh, sharing information in this domain. And thank you. There is some time for a couple of questions. Is there any questions?